Hello and welcome back to this episode 6 of Tunnel Vision. My name is Andra Giorgio and I'm a content producer here at Tideway. I'm just out getting my daily dose of fresh air and spring is coming. It really looks like we can see the light at the end of this tunnel. If this is your first time finding us, hit subscribe and see our other videos. If not, welcome back. We've got some super exciting things for you this month, focusing on our Vortex. But before that, we were named Project of the Year in EDI's Sustainability Leaders Awards. We're so proud of this win, and as an environmental project cleaning up the River Thames, it's wonderful to be recognized this way. Check out the link below to see why we won and what other things our teams are doing to stay as sustainable as possible, whether that is green financing, moving material by river, or our amazing apprenticeships. Every day, Tidewing is using innovative solutions to solve complex engineering problems. As you know, the new super sewer will intercept sewage overflows. Every year, millions of tons of raw sewage go into the river. And we're gonna put a stop to that. We are diverting those villages into the super sewer, which we're building deep beneath London. But there is a problem. The super sewer is up to 70 meters deep underground. If we were to drop the flows from that high down the shaft, the bottom would simply wear away, right? And that's where the vortex comes in. These giant stainless steel components will spin the flow so they don't damage the bottom. The effect is similar to what you see when water rushes through the plug in your sink. Or have you ever seen a coin spiraling down a fundraising funnel at your local community center? Or water rushing through the middle of an open water bottle. Let me demonstrate. Let's look at a real-life example on the Tideway project to understand this better. In the summer of 2020, the Tideway team in Hammersmith took delivery of the components for the first of these gigantic vortexes. The largest part is a single piece of pipe called a drop tube, and the structure is so big that it needed to be escorted throughout its 326-mile journey from its manufacturing site in Cumbria all the way to West London. The whole system is 65 tons, about the same as 5 double-decker buses or 10 African elephants. It's a whopping 21 meters long, or 3 giraffes. And the drop tube is 3.5 meters in diameter, which is big enough to house a tube carriage. This structure took 8 months to build and transport to site. Once installed, its role would be to transport all the storm water flows from the Hammersmith catchment area which shudders around 2 million tons per year. These flows will then need to be dropped down a 15 meter deep interception shaft into the connection tunnel and then on into the super sewer, which is why the vortex is needed. Without a vortex, flows falling from that distance would very quickly wear away the bottom of the shaft. The vortex generator is designed to control the rate at which sewage flows down the shaft by spinning the flows down the pipe. It controls the rate at which sewage flows down the shaft before it reaches the main tunnel, preserving the base of the shaft. The complexities of handling large volumes of water moving at speed represent an enormous factor in the overall design engineering of the super sewer. Building one of these systems is difficult enough, but then we have to go through the installation, a feat of engineering which requires years of meticulous planning. The vortex is then lifted and rotated vertically before being lowered and fixed into place into the shaft, embedded onto the edge of the shaft with concrete. The long drop tube section has more than a thousand stainless steel studs welded onto its outer wall, each precisely measured to make sure it stays in place within its concrete bedding. from vortexes to something very different. We took one time breakthrough artist, rapper Professor Green, himself an East Londoner, to meet another pair of underground artists, tunnel boring machines Ursula and Selina, which are linking to form the eastern section of our tunnel, to bring the story of the super sewer to a whole new audience with the help of engineer Annie He. Hello Professor Green, how are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. How are you Annie? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. That's a lot of protective equipment you're wearing. Where are you? Um, yeah, I'm in my 
Yeah, so right now I'm down uh, in the shop, which is 60 v 50. But yep. behind me, uh, can you see all the cutter heads? Yep. So that is our breakthrough artist. She's called Ursula. I love that they've got female names. I love that they've got human names and they're referred to as people. It, it's cool. She has come, come a long way from Battersea all the way to Berlin. From this point onwards, uh, it's another 5.5 kilometers mm -hmm. uh, that we're, we're going to mine to uh, Abigail's. How many kilometers is that in total then that you would have mined? So in total, it's 25 kilometers. So what is the tunnel? So the tunnel is uh, the new sewage system. So the current sewage system was built in 1858. So yeah, the population was a lot more smaller, about 4 million people. Right. And now we've got about 9 million people. So we need to uh, create a bigger uh, sewer system to handle the extra uh, sewers coming in. It's a real shame I couldn't get down there, obviously, because of COVID and see all that in person, but it is incredibly yeah. impressive and I think you're doing an incredible job. Um, and hopefully we can help spread the word and, and let Londoners know just how important this is and, and, and what it's going to do for future generations. We hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give us the thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss out on future episodes. See you next time on Tunnel Vision.